Hey everyone, this is Josh with a Bitcoin security related tutorial for you today, available at ChainTUTS.com. And today we're talking about cryptocurrency exchange security. Crypto exchanges are an important and unique part of the Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency ecosystem where you're able to exchange between different crypto assets and go back and forth between crypto assets and fiat dollars. These exchanges always use custodial wallets, meaning that they hold the private keys to the cryptocurrency for you. That's just kind of the nature of crypto exchanges other than DeFi exchanges, which are a different topic. And Crypto exchange security is something that newcomers to the space often get wrong, which can lead to disastrous consequences, as in losing a lot of money. So I want to tell you some basic tips that you can use to keep your crypto assets secure when you're storing them on an exchange. The first pointer is to always use strong two-factor authentication settings on your exchange accounts. This means using app-based, TOTP is the technical term, such as Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator, Duo, etc. These are the applications that you install on your phone, and the exchange will give you a QR code secret to scan and store in that application. When you go to log in, you'll open up that app and see somewhere around six-digit codes that cycle every 30 seconds and you'll enter those codes into the exchange when you log in. An even better way to do two-factor authentication is to get yourself one of these. This is a YubiKey, the generic term being security key. This is a USB device that stores secrets uh, that can't be retrieved off of the device in a physical token that you just plug into your computer. This is the most secure way to do two-factor authentication, and it's also more convenient than app-based 2FA. All you have to do is have that device plugged into your laptop and tap it when you go to log in. You don't have to deal with opening up a, another app on your phone and entering codes into the website. It's quick, and these store secrets in a way that's even more secure than an app on your phone. So if you have a lot of money on exchanges, or you're just worried about your linked bank accounts and that sort of things, spend the $45 or the $50 or whatever it costs to get a YubiKey or another security key brand and have a backup. You can register more than one key on an exchange website and most websites. That way, if you lose one of them, you have the other one as a backup. Never used SMS or text message based 2FA on any websites, but especially crypto exchanges. The, this method of 2FA has been proven time and time again to be vulnerable to something called a SIM swap attack. This is where an attacker finds out your phone number and the fact that you use a crypto exchange and they will call up your phone provider, say AT&T or Verizon, pretending to be you they'll claim that they lost their phone or for some other reason need to get that number ported to the attacker's new account. Once they have access to your phone number, they don't even need your password. They can simply initiate a password reset on the crypto exchange. Now they have full access to your account to try and clean you out or use your linked bank account to purchase crypto and send to themselves. Don't use SMS two-factor authentication. This is not a secure way to do 2FA anymore. Always use app-based or security key-based 2FA. Now the second pointer is about password security. This is something that's always tricky for folks coming into a very security conscious space such as cryptocurrency. Your short password that you've been using for every account for 10 years is not good enough. You need to have a unique password for every website you visit, really, but especially critical accounts like crypto exchanges. Don't reuse your password for your Coinbase account or your Gemini or your Binance account anywhere else. 
The reason for this is, those websites have really good security for the most part around their password databases. It's not that a hack is impossible, but it's unlikely that Coinbase's password database gets attacked. The problem is, if you're reusing that password on some other website that doesn't have good security practices, and that password is leaked in a data breach, now attackers have a password that they are going to try against your Coinbase or your Binance account. That's why password reuse is problematic, especially for high value critical accounts like crypto exchanges. This password should be long. Length is more important for complex than complexity in a general sense when it comes to password. Uh, if you have a password that's banking and a bunch of characters are substituted out in leet speak, like you know the at symbol and an exclamation point instead of an I, that doesn't really do anything to stop modern password cracking software. Instead, lots of a uh, much longer password really increases the amount of characters that a brute force attack would have to try. So a long pass phrase is a much better approach. Uh, my money account here is a better password than banking with those characters substituted out. Now, something that's made up of English words is still a little bit easier for password cracking than a fully randomly generated password stored in a password manager. I highly recommend storing your unique passphrases for every website that you use in a secure password manager such as LastPass, KeePass, or 1Password. Don't store your passwords in plain text in a Google Doc or something like that because that's another avenue of attack for somebody that's trying to breach your accounts. But these tools will allow you to generate truly random passphrases that are long and that become completely impossible to crack using password cracking in the event of some kind of data breach. So passwords are again a critical part of this. Don't reuse passwords make long passphrases, and better yet, randomly generate them and store them in a password manager. The third tip is one that you might miss and is often missed when talking about exchange security. So far we've been talking about securing the exchange account itself, but I bet you didn't think about how important it is to secure the email associated with your crypto exchange account. If somebody breaches your Gmail account and sees that you use Coinbase, they could easily uh, initiate a password reset and gain access to Coinbase. So it's just as important to use these two-factor and password security practices for your main email and all your emails uh, as it is on the exchange account itself. If you're using crypto exchanges and you're using any web services that are important to you, such as Facebook, social media, things that you do, banking, you know, things that you don't want other people to have access to. Make sure that your email is one of the most secure accounts that you own. Make sure you have long, unique passphrases and strong two-factor authentication. Because given password resets, your email is a critical point of failure when it comes to the security of your online accounts. And attackers can and do try to breach emails first and then move into crypto exchanges. That's the most critical stuff. Making sure you have strong 2FA, making sure that you have strong unique passphrases, and that your email is secure as well. There's a couple other useful features that many crypto exchanges offer that I think are valuable to talk about. One of them that I've found very useful is the feature of address whitelisting. This is a feature whereby you can specify specific crypto addresses that you want to have uh, allowed to send to from your exchange account. So you can set up addresses for your hardware wallet and your mobile spend wallets, you know, the difference between your long-term savings and your short-term savings, whatever you like. And Coinbase then requires that if you want to add a new address, you have to wait 48 hours or longer before that address is um, available to send to. So when you set up address whitelisting, you can set up all of your personal addresses. And if an attacker were to gain access to your exchange account and want to clean you out to send to their crypto addresses, which is irreversible, 
You would have 48 hours of lead time to secure your account and make sure uh, that you can lock it down before they could send coins to their own addresses. I think that's a really neat and useful feature. So take advantage of the initial, you know, five, eight hour um, grandfathering in period to add all of the addresses you think that you're going to need for your various hardware, mobile, whatever wallets that you're using that are non-custodial. And then you can send coins to yourself without having to wait, but if an attacker breaches your account, you have time to get that account under your control again through normal support channels. I think that's a really neat and useful feature that could be a last line of defense in the um, case of a data breach. Another sort of last line of defense is 2FA for sends. So let's say, for example, you know, you leave your Coinbase account logged in on a shared computer somewhere by accident. I hope you're not doing that, but it could happen. You should enable that for any send to an external cryptocurrency address, like we talked about with address whitelisting, that you have to enter two-factor authentication codes or tap your security key. Again, this is just another last line of defense in some oddball case where somebody gains access to your account but doesn't have your two-factor authentication. This, again, can save you from having somebody immediately gain access to your crypto account through some avenue and then cleaning you out to their own crypto addresses, which is irreversible. So in combination, all of these things can really help you lock down your crypto exchange accounts. Because crypto exchanges use very traditional sort of security avenues such as passwords and 2FA and email, uh, there's something that newcomers to the space often miss. You know, maybe they take a couple extra steps to secure their non-custodial seed phrases and those sorts of things, but they don't really think about the exchange issues. Uh, you know, unfortunately, most people don't use strong passwords and don't use strong 2FA. So take the time now to secure these accounts. Make sure that these accounts are difficult for attackers to breach. Don't be the low-hanging fruit. Uh, exchanges are an important part of the crypto ecosystem. Even if you're not keeping money on there, it may be linked to your bank accounts and ways to purchase crypto through fiat. So save yourself pain in the future from trying to clean up a mess by going through these things now. It doesn't take a lot of time and these practices are going to make you a more difficult target for somebody trying to steal your money. Hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative, and thanks for learning something new with me today.